Welcome to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Mega Man for the Game Gear, brought to us by US Gold. US Gold and Freestyle, the developer, worked together in order to buy the license of Mega Man from Capcom in order to make this portable version for the Sega Game Gear. While the game is just called Mega Man, it is not a remake of the original game. Instead, it is kind of a collaboration of elements from Mega Man 4 and 5. The game features a total of six robot masters, some from Mega Man 4, and others from Mega Man 5. They use the same basic level design from those games in order to recreate the levels here on the Game Gear. The game also interestingly enough features two difficulty modes, a normal and a hard mode, similar to the NES version of Mega Man 2 in North America. The game was released in 1995, pretty late for the Game Gear, and has since become one of the rarer, most sought-after Game Gear titles. It also was only released in North America, no European or Japanese release. The game starts off with a brief story using similar artwork to the Mega Man games on the NES. When you make it to the title menu, you can put in a password or start a new game, in which case you can then pick the normal or hard difficulties. Then you get to the Robot Master Select screen, which you can pick Stone Man, Napalm Man, Bright Man, or the one that we're going to be starting with, Star Man. One thing you'll notice right away is that the graphics are quite nice for the Game Gear. They represent the characters quite well and are just pretty much an enhanced version of what we saw on the NES. The controls work quite well, Mega Man actually does control pretty good. He has of course the basic shoot, as well as a jump button, but he also has elements that were introduced in Mega Man 3 and 4, the slide ability, as well as the charge up ability for the Mega Buster. And while the soundtrack may not be as good as the original NES versions, it's not too bad here. The worst thing though that you'll notice also pretty early on is that the game is very much zoomed in. Due to the limited amount of space on the actual Game Gear game, the character of Mega Man has to be zoomed in quite closely. Because of this, you aren't able to see a large amount of the screen at times, and this can make boss battles, as well as other areas, a lot more treacherous and painful than they need to be. This is something that we also saw on the Nintendo handheld Mega Man games for the Game Boy. However, I find it at sometimes worse in this than I saw it in those games. Most of the enemies that you're going to be facing throughout the levels, of course, are based on the actual levels of the NES counterparts. For example, we have the Matuls here in the Space Gear, which are easily one of my favorite enemies in this game. In Starman's level, because it's a space-themed level, you have less gravity, so picking this level first may throw you off a little bit when you jump then into the next level afterwards. Starman is one of the easiest of the Robot Masters in this game to contend with, and due to the gravity, his stage isn't too difficult to get through. There's a few tricky spots that you have to watch out for the giant missiles that pop out of the pits so that you don't end up getting knocked down into them. But overall, any veteran of Mega Man shouldn't have trouble and this is a good way to start off the game. Now for Starman himself. Use your charged up shots on Starman when he ends up throwing the shield at you in order to actually do damage. 
He jumps around the room quite fast, and on the harder difficulty, all the fights in the game seem to be a lot tougher, as well as, of course, you're going to take a little bit more damage, it seems like. What makes any of these fights in this game hard is because of the zoomed in camera, you're not going to be able to have a good glimpse of the enemy at all times, and if you go too far right or left, depending upon where the enemy is, he'll go off screen and you won't be able to see what he's doing next in his pattern to be able to judge it. For defeating Starman, you end up getting the Crash Weapon, aka the Star Shield that goes around them, and you can use this to protect yourself, as well as throw it or just run into enemies with it equipped in order to do damage to them. After the password screen, we then get to select our next Robot Master, and we're moving on to Brightman's level. Now, Brightman's level, I am quite familiar with from the original version of Mega Man 4 on the NES. The main thing here is you have two enemies that become essential to the level. You have the ones that shoot up fireworks that light the screen up, and then you have the giant light bulbs that when you shoot them, it makes the entire screen go dark. Another key point of this level is the grasshoppers. You jump on their back, and very slowly they will traverse over the spikes. Along the way through this, you may have a few enemies, including the totem poles. Using a charged up shot on those totem pole-like enemies is enough in order to get rid of them. When you climb up to this ladder, you'll have a gumball machine that you just fire a bunch of shots at. He'll fire some projectiles, but keep mashing the attack. He's one of the easier of the stationary enemies in the game. On the second set of grasshoppers, it's just more of the same. Wait for the one to go over here. You'll want to jump up to the top level here. Even though the grasshopper you're on on the bottom part will jump up, it's quicker and easier just to jump to the next one. Take out the totem pole, be sure to jump over the giant gap here, and keep firing at the next totem pole guy. This is the harder jump, but if you do a running jump right off the grasshopper, you can land on the ladder without having to wait for the grasshopper to make that final leap into the pit itself. The next segment is more of the light bulbs as well as the firework guys. However, you have these platforms that when you jump on them, they will start to move. When they get to the end of their track, the red ones will fall off the track, causing you to fall down into the pit if you don't jump off to the next platform, and the green ones which will continue going back and forth. The last one is the only one that's difficult to judge because you won't have another platform that's standing out in the darkness for you to jump to. So when you see that one, just make a jump forward, and you should land either safely on the platform or on the firework shooting guy. Now it's time for Bright Man. Now Bright Man's main ability is he's going to jump around the room, land after a few jumps, and then start firing his projectile at you. Even on the hard difficulty, this isn't a tough fight. Use the crash ability that you got from Starman a little bit earlier in order to either throw the shield or just have Bright Man land on top of you with the shield going. After only a handful of these though, Bright Man will be defeated, and we move on to the next Robot Master. We end up getting the Bright Weapon from him as we now enter Napalm Man, and the Bright Weapon will definitely help us against Napalm Man. Basically, it makes the screen flash, and if you're standing near an enemy, it will do damage to them. Not the most effective of the Master's moves you end up getting here, but it will help us out. Napalm Man's level, which is my favorite from Mega Man 5, is the toughest in my opinion in this game. There's a lot of big enemies during this level, and there's a lot of stuff that's really kind of hard to avoid at times. Take advantage to any health that may drop from enemies. For example, the Matuls here, I find it easier just to take a little bit of damage and run through them. The timing on them and the multiple hits you have to do to them, as well as jump over the giant projectile they shoot out, just honestly isn't worth it. I end up getting hit by the projectile more often than being able to do damage to them. The problem, of course, with running through any enemy in a Mega Man game is you will take significant damage. On these platforms, you want to be very careful of the mines. As soon as you land on the platform itself, the mine will start flying towards you. You'll either want to take out the mine before landing on the platform, or jump over the mine and let it go into a pit. Be careful on a few jumps that when you do land on the mine, it doesn't knock you back into a pit. These big guys here are extremely annoying. They take a lot of hits, you have to hit them directly in the eye area of their head, and they are firing missiles out consistently. 
However, it's recommended that you do take them out, not run through them because they do a lot of damage. However, the second one, if you end up getting hit by a missile, just land on the spike safely for just a second, and as you're still flashing, you jump up and pass the guy, so that you avoid losing a life from the spikes, or lose health more so by running into the giant guy. Now this guy, in the tight area that you're in, just, if you get hit, run past him. If you're able to somehow do enough damage to actually defeat this guy, congratulations, but if not, if you just get hit by anything, whether it's the missiles, the exploding missiles and the pieces that fly out, or him himself, just run past. Because of this, it is just one of the many enemies here that, like I said, that causes a lot of damage to you. Trying to keep your health up in this level is definitely one of the toughest. There are some hidden E-tanks around the levels themselves to help you out, but some of them are a little bit out of the way or just really hard to get to. Now when we make it to Napalm Man here, I have extremely low health. Many times when I would get to a boss like this with either one or two hits against Napalm Man, I ended up losing a life. With Brave Man's ability equipped, I can walk away from Napalm Man and keep attacking him even when he's about to fire out projectiles at me. Some of them are just impossible to dodge when he does the multiple missiles in a row, and you're in a really small area between yourself, him, and the wall. You can time the slides perfectly, you can avoid these missiles, but usually I end up getting hit by them. While Napalm Man is one of my favorites from Mega Man 5, definitely my least favorite to face off with in Mega Man for Game Gear. Once he's done, we get his ability, and we move on to the final of the first four Robot Masters. This one is Stone Man. The Matuls at the very beginning of Stone Man's level, when you shoot them, they break apart into three little Matuls and start bouncing around. It's actually really interesting to look back at a game like this, and think that Capcom licensed out Mega Man. Not only for this project, but they also licensed them out to other companies like High Tech Expressions that made the Mega Man DOS games. Interesting enough though that Capcom hasn't done something like this in more recent years to let other companies revive Mega Man instead of just kind of letting him sit there, canceling games that he's supposed to come out in, and just overall kind of almost killing the franchise. If this or the DOS games didn't harm the franchise that much, why not do it now? Stone Man's level overall isn't too bad, and it actually is probably an alternative if you don't want to start with Star Man, this would be the other level you would want to go to first. Stone Man, while not necessarily as easy in my opinion as Star Man, is not hard to do with just the Mega Buster. I also seem to find a decent amount of health throughout this level, whether it's already the big health items that are located in the stage, or the enemies dropping them. These enemies right here take a little bit for them to actually remove the shield and actually fire at you, so that makes things a little bit difficult, because you also have the other kind of rotating robots trying to come at you as well. When you make it up here, wait a few seconds for these guys to come down and then defeat them, then ride the platform up. If you try to ride it up beforehand, you may accidentally run into the robots that are spinning down towards you and fall down to a pit. These set of jumps here, where you have to quickly jump up between each one as it's flying across the screen, the third one is probably one of the toughest and trickiest jumps to land. The hit detection and the height of your jump can be off at times, and I found myself dying a few times at that particular jump. There's also an E-Tank at that spot located in the upper left corner. I've never had an opportunity to easily grab it, though. Not long after that, though, we move into Stone Man's chamber himself. Stone Man is pretty easy. He jumps back and forth, and after landing a big jump, he'll crumble into a whole bunch of rocks. In order to do damage, though, you have to actually hit Stone Man in the head. After standing up from being a pile of rocks, he'll usually cause two giant rocks to start rotating around the screen, taking up a good amount of space. But because the room is large enough, you can usually get away from these altogether. Hit him with the Mega Buster for a little while if you want to, and then switch over to the Napalm move. 
Timing the napalm hits with Stoneman can be difficult because you can't hit him while he's just formed as a rock pile. And he likes to sometimes jump over or away from the actual napalms themselves. My best strategy is, when moving away from him as he's jumping towards you, do a quick turn backwards and drop one, then jump over to the left or right depending upon what area is coming from, away from him. That way he'll land, hopefully, on that napalm. After defeating the first four Robot Masters, we then move on to Dr. Kozik's castle from Mega Man 4. Now, he doesn't make an appearance at all in the game itself. It's just interesting that you end up going to his castle, or at least that's the image they chose in the background. But in reality, instead of going to a level like a Dr. Wily style level, instead you're actually going to first Wave Man's level, and then we'll be going to another Robot Masters level after this one. Waveman stage is similar to how it was designed the first time around. On these pipes, you want to make sure you watch out for the steam or water that's coming out of it, as well as avoid the giant spike ball moving back and forth. Climb to the top here to grab an item, and then go through the upper path through the pipe in order to land on a platform that will allow you to get the extra life. At this part, you have to wait for the bubbles to come out of the ground themselves. They come out of three spots. You have the little bubbles and the big ones. The big one, at the first time, will jump out of the middle spot. Ride that up to the second screen. Once up here, you'll have to jump to the left to the two small bubbles, and then make a big jump to the far left in order to land on another one of the big ones. On the third screen, you have to be careful to jump off the bubbles at the right time so you don't hit your head on the spikes above. You'll jump to a small bubble and then on safely to the platform itself. The next little area is blank until you make it to this vehicle. Now this was an exact segment that was also in the Waveman stage in Mega Man 5, and it's one of the cooler moments of that game, being able to ride this vehicle, fire at enemies, and jump over them. It's something that we hadn't seen in a Mega Man game. And it's represented well here. Overall, not too difficult, and you want to conserve your health because you're getting close to the actual boss fight. The worst enemies are these that jump off from the right side onto the left side, and they jump so far on screen they can be a little bit difficult to judge where they are, and also when you're trying to avoid the Sniper Joe guys coming from behind, they can be even more of a pain. Halfway through, you'll have a little mini-boss here of this octopus moving up and down in the water, and you have to shoot the blue jewel on his helmet. You won't be able to do any charge shots while riding in the vehicle, so you have to just use your normal one singular shots in order to take this guy out. After he gets halfway through his health, he'll start moving a little bit faster fire the rest of the shots, and once he's destroyed, you move on to the second half of the vehicle segment. The second part of this segment is definitely tougher than the first. You'll have a few more enemies jumping from the right side, and a few more Sniper Joes to contend with as well. Right after the segment is done, take out the giant cannon before entering into the boss chamber. Now, Waveman himself does not have a weakness. It's kind of rare that Robot Masters don't have any weaknesses, uh, especially this late in the game, but um, they really didn't plan ahead. Charge Man was actually Waveman's weakness in Mega Man 5. Since he's not available in this game, they didn't substitute with anything, so you're just gonna have to use the Mega Buster. Watch out for the waves that he pulls out of the ground itself that will block any shots that you fire directly at it, so you have to be on the right or left side closest to him in order to keep hitting him while that thing is up in the air. Also, while that is up, if you get close to him, he also will fire out a projectile straight at you, so you'll have to jump over that in order to avoid damage. Thankfully, even though the Mega Buster is his only weakness, it works quite well against him and doesn't take too many shots to drain this guy's health. Once he's defeated, you'll get the wave weapon, and you won't get a password, you'll instead move right on to the next segment, which ends up being Toad Man's level. It's interesting that Toad Man is the final and sixth robot master that we're going to be battling in Mega Man for Game Gear. He's actually one of the easiest robot masters from Mega Man 4, and is usually the one I start off with. The beginning of his level, because of the combined space and the bigness of the sprites, 
There's a lot of enemies on screen, the big birds as well as the little ones that will try to dive bomb at you, as well as the McTools with the umbrellas. The worst part about this though is you have to contend with the wind trying to push you from the storm. So be very careful and get your jumps close to where you need them before actually attempting them. Sometimes if you're lucky if you notice that a jump is not quite gonna work, you can backtrack. It doesn't always work, but it's kind of a little bit of a safety catch. During this segment, of course, the water, whatever way it's throwing, will end up pushing or pulling you, so you have to be careful not to fall down to the pit from the waterfall, and you're still able to make it over your jumps. If you try to jump where one of the giant things of water are coming down on you, you'll be pressured by that water and won't be able to jump up into the air. Down here we fight a giant snail. You'll fight two of these in the level. The second one's a little bit tougher because of the platform you're battling them on. He fires his giant eyes out at you, and you have to do a charged up beam, a regular shot to the eyes in order to do damage. Jumping on the second segment because of the waterfall itself, as well as the water pushing and pulling you, is more difficult. About three or four charged up shots should be enough in order to take out the giant snail. Next up, move along these platforms. You can ignore the water below as well as the spikes all along the bottom. Just wait for the fish to jump out of the water and come towards you and then either blast it or just jump away from it and then attempt to keep moving on throughout normal platforms. It's then time to battle Toad Man. We don't even have to worry about a weakness on this guy. Use your charged up shots and anytime he lands, he'll raise his hands up into the air and after a couple of seconds, he'll start dancing around summoning rain. But if you time your shots, you'll be able to prevent him from summoning the rain and he'll just go right back into his jump pattern. This, like I said before, Toad Man is one of the easiest from Mega Man 4 and he remains one of the easiest even in this game and as late in the game as we are. After he's defeated, we grab his ability and we move on, well, to another castle. No explanation is really given, and then all of a sudden we're at Dr. Wily's castle of all things. And, well, Dr. Wily's castle, you don't fight a robot master, instead, you replay Quick Man stage from Mega Man 2. Of all the things, instead of actually having another robot master to face, or another type of enemy, or an original level, you replay Quick Man 2, which is considered one of the toughest stages in all of Mega Man. However, there's a big difference in this one. The beams that attack you in this one, that normally would be an instant kill, only do slight damage to you. So they really aren't a threat, making this level extremely easy to get through. The flame guys at the bottom here are one of the few enemies even in this level. Just keep firing and moving back and forth, avoiding the flames as they throw them in an arcing pattern. After enough of them, the screen will go dark one more time, eventually the lights will come on and you drop down into the second part of the giant laser grid. If you're an expert at Mega Man 2 or you've played it a bunch, you shouldn't have too much trouble navigating through here. There's some couple of things to grab, including we grabbed that E-Tank earlier on, there's some extra lives, as well as some health items, but overall, it's a pretty easy segment. Slide underneath the giant mech riding Sniper Joe-like guy, and then enter the boss door. Or, lack of boss door, as you just enter the door, and then teleport off into the final level of the game. Now, this level is a very brief segment, and it only has one enemy, a giant cannon, at the end, and then you enter the pod in order to battle Dr. Wily, and this is it. This is the final boss of the game. Dr. Wily has only one form in the game, and we're just going to use the Mega Buster in order to take him out. He'll appear randomly around the screen. He'll drop out two blasts, one going left and one going right once they hit the ground. You can easily jump over them. He'll then have a circle of blasts moving around him that will expand a little bit and then shrink back up. When they shrink back up, they'll disappear, and after they disappear, Wily will reappear himself. Now, you can use the Rush Coil in order to bounce high enough in the air to hit him while he's at higher altitudes, but I find it best just to wait for him to come down to you, and then blast him with a full charged up Mega Buster shot. If you time it right, you can actually hit him with a full charged up shot and a slightly charged up shot before he disappears and starts having those expansions of the actual energy. It also doesn't take too many hits in order to actually defeat Dr. Wily, which ends up making this one of the easiest Mega Man games of all time. Once you deliver the final hit to him, you can sit back and enjoy the ending 
to Mega Man on Game Gear. So there you have it, the credits start rolling with a nice firework effect that actually showcases the credits. Uh, this is one of the few original things they put into the game and it's actually quite nice looking for sure. Due to the fact of only having six robot masters similar to Mega Man 1, but also only having a few wily based levels including, well, just a retelling of Quick Man and then one final hallway, no rematches against any of the previous Robot Masters, this ends up being one of, if not the shortest Mega Man game, and also happens to be one of the easiest ones, even on the hard difficulty. The question of course is the game really worth playing or is it a bad game? It's, it's not a bad game by any means, and for being on a Sega Game Gear, it's kind of a cool concept of being able to play Mega Man Portable while not having a Game Boy. The only thing about it is, there are so many other great available Mega Man titles that this one just gets completely outshined. I have to say that US Goal and Freestyle did a much better job with the Mega Man license than High Tech Expressions did with the two DOS games. I love the end though for the thank you for playing and Dr. Wily kind of freaking out with Mega Man just standing there, and then once you press start, you can go back to the main menu and start the game all over again. But with that, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.